you remember this surprising moment? The Ballon d'Or France Football 2019 is Mr. Lionel Messi. And Messi has done it, number six. It might seem surprising, but many people didn't think Messi deserved to win the Ballon d'Or. But on the other hand, he, he is coming up against a player for me that is stopping goals, you know, and that's Virgil van Dijk. And I think for me at the moment, he's worthy of winning, winning it this year. But if I, go, if I give it to the best player of the last season, then it was Virgil van Dijk. I, I would bring it back to Virgil van Dijk. Virgil's team have lost two games in a whole calendar year. Man is a defender, my team has lost two games. That's mad. Two. Yeah. What? And I'm not contributing. Bro, give man the ball and door. So how did Virgil van Dijk get to having such a phenomenal season that made him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of football's greatest players for the Ballon d'Or? It all started from his humble beginnings where he worked as a dishwasher. Yeah, you heard it right. I was a dishwasher. Yeah. In a restaurant? Or? In a restaurant, yeah. So when I was 16, 17, I didn't have a contract at the time. And uh, obviously, I wanted to also you know, sometimes go for yeah. the drink or get McDonald's or, you know, these yeah. kind of type of stuff when you're young. So you need to get a little bit of money because my mom didn't have enough money to just give it to me. Yeah. At that time, Virgil van Dijk was playing in the youth team of Willem V. I had a great childhood. You know, I was playing outside on the streets a lot. I have a little brother, I have a little sister as well. My brother is two years younger than me. And at that time, playing outside was, you know, was it. I got picked up quite early by Willem II, um, a, a, a mid-table team back then in, in, in the Eredivisie in Holland. And um, I played there 10 years in the academy. And around the end of his time at Willem II, the first struggles came. 15, 16, that was a time that I struggled quite a bit. Um, didn't have my growth spurt yet. Yeah. And before that, major family issues occurred. His dad left his family. Which is also why behind the back of Van Dijk's shirt, there's Virgil, his first name, written, and not Van Dijk. His mom had to work a lot to keep the family going, hence why, as explained by the player himself, he had to take the dishwashing job when he was at Willems V. Until... Luckily, after that, I went to FC Groningen, yeah. get my contract, and then dishwasher was over. <laughs> Van Dijk signing with Groningen again was the start of his professional career, but once again, it wasn't easy at all for Virgil, who came very close to death during that time. You, you had an illness though, didn't you? Put you back up. up. Appendix. Yeah, yeah. And, and you had complications after it. Yeah. How worrying was that? It was worrying. Uh, obviously, um, you know, that time was, was difficult. Um, it got me um, a lot of knowledge in how to deal, for example, with nutrition, uh, what's obviously uh, a very important part of life uh, in general. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it was not an easy time, but it definitely shaped me again in, in who I am today. Von Dijk needed a life-saving surgery to fix his ruptured appendix, which caused appendicitis, peritonitis, and a kidney infection. At first, coaches and staff thought it was a simple flu. Von Dijk decided to get checked at a local hospital, and they told him everything was okay but the pain started becoming unbearable. At that point, Van Dijk's mom went from her hometown all the way to Groningen and decided to bring Virgil to get checked by another hospital. That luckily brought to light Van Dijk's issues and most likely saved his life. After he got over this issue, he became a starter for Groningen, but nobody really believed in him. Former coach Dick Lukin said, The technical staff has divided opinions on him. While former teammate Case Kwakman said, Did we see then that he would be the most expensive defender in the world? If I said yes, I would be lying. But then he also mentioned how it was clear Von Dijk had qualities that made him deserve a bigger club. His first season in Groningen wasn't good at all. The club ended in the 14th spot of the tables, 39 points behind Ajax, the champions. The second one was better, with the club coming really close to reaching the Europa League playoffs. After that, Van Dijk left the club. I was at Groningen, I would love to go to an Ajax or Feyenoord or PSV or, you know, because they are the traditional top three in, 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 the, in the league and it didn't happen, but Celtic was there. Van Dijk joined Celtic in an unexpected move for him. 
The move to Celtic didn't only help Van Dijk in developing on a football aspect, it helped him in developing as a person as well. He moved to a completely new city and in a country with different cultures and language to the Netherlands. He moved there together with his wife only. Some players can be affected by such a drastic change to their life, but Van Dijk adapted really well. On the pitch, his rise at Celtic was quick. I think nobody really knew too much about him. And then uh, two, three months into the season, all the lads were like, this guy is a player. Did you see the potential? Yeah. We knew we had a steal on our hands. The minute he walked, I think we, bought, we only bought him for about a million, two million, something like that. And we just thought, oh my God, this guy. Forward, and we had the luxury. He would run through half the team. He'd hit three kicks. He was scoring three kicks, and we were like, just sign this guy for three million pounds. <laughs> Van Dijk became a fan favorite and won the hearts of all of the Celtic fans. He scored memorable goals. In Celtic, he played over 100 games in two years. His Celtic spell was the first proper stepping stone to the highest level. But it was time for the next step for Virgil. On September the 1st, 2015, he joined Southampton. The club was doing amazing in the Premier League. In the previous season, they finished 7th on the tables, just behind all the big 6. They bought Van Dijk as a new addition to their defense for less than 15 million pounds. And he was a perfect addition. But in 2017, Van Dijk wanted to play at higher levels. Therefore, he privately asked Southampton to sell him. The club, though, rejected his request for various reasons. First, he was the team's best player. Secondly, he had five years left on his contract. And lastly, Southampton didn't need the money. But they didn't respect the player's ambitions. In August of 2017, Virgil van Dijk submitted a transfer request through a public statement after Southampton fined him two weeks' wages, which he believes is unjust. He plans to appeal and expressed his desire to play European football and compete for major honors. Van Dijk also felt insulted by the club's misrepresentation of his absence from preseason, as it was their decision, not his. Van Dijk, however, no matter how much he wanted to leave, he was forced to stay in Southampton for another six months, until... On December 27, 2017, with a picture under the Christmas tree, Liverpool announced the signing of Virgil van Dijk for a fee of £75 million, making him the most expensive defender ever at that time. And of course, because of that, Liverpool got criticised a lot, and the hype and pressure around van Dijk were real. Much more high pressure, yeah. much all eyes are on you, whether you're training or whatever you're doing, whatever competition you're in with Liverpool. It's reported that a fee is £70 million, rising to 75, which is still a ludicrous amount of money when you think about it. Here's the thing, Lovren was a much better defender at Southampton than Van Dijk ever was, I think. And now that's going to be the big thing, because Lovren comes in at Liverpool and we obviously know what's happened there. Is there a concern it could happen for Van Dijk as well? Of, of course. People will look at the, the transfer fee, that's normally strikers going with that type of uh, figure, but as with any transfer fee, if he performs well and does his job, what he's been brought in for, it'll be, it'll be worth it. But Van Dijk didn't care about it. With the price tag, or is that something he just took in his stride? It's all about showing your qualities, first and foremost. And for me personally, I knew that when you show your qualities, when you just being yourself and express yourself in what you can do, no one will speak about any price tag. Just for some context, Liverpool was nowhere close to the powerhouse it is today at that time. They were coming off a long decay. But the 2017-18 through 18 season was the one where things started getting better. A new phenomenal attacking trio formed in Liverpool. Salah, Firmino, Mane. Together with them was the star of Liverpool at that time, Felipe Cucino, who left for Barcelona in January just when Virgil van Dijk joined for more than 150 million euro. The Reds, though, had many weaknesses in their defense, and they were getting exposed kind of frequently. They needed someone to change that, which is the reason why Van Dijk got signed. Things got dramatically better. Van Dijk was loved by all fans, and in his first six months, he helped the team to reach the biggest game a football club can play, the Champions League final. But it didn't go that well. 
first, Salah, their best player, was injured by Ramos with a crazy tackle. He's out. What a shot for... Then, Liverpool's keeper, Kallius, entered the scene with a performance that will be remembered forever. Almost straight forward to Lattel. It's a goal! Liverpool equalized, but then Gareth Bale decided to put Madrid ahead with this goal. With three to pick out. It's the spectacular! And then Bale, with the help of Kallius, scored the third and final goal. Oh, he's gone for it! And it's gone straight through the goalkeeper! A disappointing end to a great Champions League campaign for Liverpool. But only greater things were about to come. Van Dijk's best season ever. The one that turned him into one of the best defenders of this generation was about to start. After being so close to winning the Champions League, people thought that Liverpool had reached its peak. But in reality, they were only getting better. Van Dijk was a key piece for Klopp's tactics. Klopp wanted the team to have a really high pressing line, with the fullbacks Trent and Robertson being very offensive. With this highly attacking tactic, the team had the risk to concede counterattacks. But having the best defender in the world at that time made up for that issue. With his pace, he would make it really hard for opposition attackers to get past him. And in fact, during a game, a situation exactly like the one I just told you happened where Van Dijk would find himself against two attackers, but more on that later. In the Premier League, Liverpool was destroying every team they came across, getting 17 wins and 3 draws in 20 games, while also scoring 48 goals and conceding only 8. Their rivals in this title race, Manchester City, were on a rather similar path. But they lost 3 games in their first 20, while Liverpool were undefeated. On the 3rd of January 2019, the two teams would go ahead in one of the most anticipated clashes of recent Premier League and football history. And it's the big one. Manchester City host Liverpool in the most important game of the Premier League. It's first against second, and really, they've saved the best to last. And in this game, there was a moment that probably decided the entire Premier League season. 1.1 centimeter more and Liverpool would have been one goal up. But John Stones made one of the most iconic saves in Premier League history. Man City would then score after about 20 minutes. Firmino equalized the score at minute 64, keeping Liverpool's hopes alive. But not for long, because after less than 10 minutes, Sané scored the second goal for Manchester City and the final goal of the game. Manchester City would therefore win a crucial game for their title run but they were still many points behind Liverpool, who were still considered the favorites. But after this game, things started taking a weird turn for the Reds. As Liverpool started dropping points while Man City was almost unstoppable. In the meantime, while going into one of the most exciting and competitive title runs, both clubs had to compete in the Champions League. Liverpool were going to play the second leg against Bayern München at the Allianz Arena. The first leg at Anfield ended with a disappointing 0-0. But in the second leg, Liverpool won 3-1. Van Dijk's contribution in this game was notable. First, with this brilliant assist. Colleagues to be around him when Bayern have got the ball tonight. It's in no man's land, it's Mane! And it's in! Then by scoring this header. Van Dijk's in! Oh, he scored! With this win, Liverpool got to the quarterfinals where they would face Porto in April of 2019. But before getting to that game, we must speak of Liverpool versus Tottenham. At that moment, Liverpool was first in the Premier League with 76 points, two more than Manchester City's 74. But Man City played one game less than Liverpool. The Reds couldn't afford to draw points against Spurs. And in fact, at minute 16, Firmino scored. Alex's head and he reaches. Robertson, it's a great ball, it's a great... But after that, Tottenham began to dominate the game, and at minute 70... Trippier Eriksson, and Lucas Moura... But the most important moment in the game happened at minute 85. After a couple quick passes forward, Tottenham were on a super dangerous counter-attack. To Kane, to Son, they're in Spurs here. Sissoko and Son were through on goal. The only thing they had to do was get past Van Dijk. And in the situation they were in, it would have been very easy, wouldn't it? 
Sissoko, he's going to do the right thing, he can go for goal, that's never been his strongest set. Van Dijk showed the perfect way to defend in a situation like this. He was in a terrible situation and was forced to take the least bad choice. Van Dijk was facing Sissoko, of which he knew two things. He was right-footed, but was carrying the ball with his left foot, and he doesn't have sharp finishing abilities. While on the other side there was Son, who was one of the best finishers Tottenham has ever had. Van Dijk decided to position himself in the middle of the passing line, making sure Sissoko couldn't give Son the ball. And it was just when Sissoko was close to the penalty box that Van Dijk quickly pressured him, making the Frenchman take this very bad shot. Five minutes after this, Liverpool would score the second goal thanks to a very lucky own goal from Tottenham's defender, making sure they could bring home three vital points. In the Champions League, Liverpool comfortably beat Porto 6-1 on aggregate, with Virgil van Dijk scoring once again. The Reds would progress to the semi-finals where they would face Barcelona in May. And their month didn't start off so well. Barcelona absolutely crushed Liverpool in the first leg of the semi-finals with a stunning 3-0. For many, the Reds' Champions League run was over. But the emotional shock couldn't take a toll on them because they were facing Newcastle in the Premier League. And they desperately needed a win because they were one point behind Manchester City. Luckily, Liverpool managed to score the winning goal in the dying minutes, bringing the score to 3-2. Van Dijk also contributed by scoring a goal. And right after this game, there was the second leg against Barcelona, a game that will be remembered forever. Liverpool quickly opened the score with Origi, but after his goal, nothing happened in the first half. Then, this legendary substitution happened. There's not much else to aim for. Now the race, it's in! It's Gini In just two minutes, Liverpool tied the game. Barcelona were scared, down three goals in the superheated atmosphere at Anfield. Then, this happened. Liverpool completed one of the most legendary comebacks ever, and they were on their way to the finals where they were going to face Tottenham. But before that, it was time for the last Premier League game of the season. Liverpool and Van Dijk were facing another unconquerable quest. Manchester City was sitting on 95 points, Liverpool on 94. But it didn't go well, because Manchester City won their game 4-1 and were crowned champions. Despite that, this title race will be remembered forever because of how thrilling it was and because how City and Liverpool were miles ahead of every other team in the league. After losing the Premier League though, Liverpool managed to win the Champions League final against Tottenham 2-0. Van Dijk was awarded the man of the match. Right after the season ended with Liverpool, he had to play the Nations League with the Netherlands, and he brought the team to the finals as a captain, where they would lose against Ronaldo's Portugal. For many, Van Dijk was a strong candidate for the Ballon d'Or, and to strengthen up that opinion, Van Dijk and Liverpool won the UEFA Super Cup against Chelsea and won literally every player except for one before the Ballon d'Or ceremony. So, to sum it up, Van Dijk won the Champions League, the UEFA Super Cup, lost the Premier League by one point, and brought his country to the Nations League Finals. And for individual awards, he was nominated the UEFA Player of the Year, Premier League Player of the Season, and Liverpool Player of the Season. He was recognized by everyone as the best defender in the world, and on top of that, he had a crazy streak. He wasn't dribbled past for more than 60 games. But all of this still wasn't enough to get the Ballon d'Or from Lionel Messi. This season was the peak of Virgil van Dijk's career, and arguably the greatest individual season from a defender ever. After that, van Dijk would go on to help Liverpool win their first Premier League in 30 years in the 2019 through 2020 season, but reaching an all-time low at the start of the following season because he tore his ACL. It took a while for him to get back on the pitch, and after he came back, he didn't look the same. People called him finished, 
but he made a comeback and he's now back at his very best. He was last season's player of the season for Liverpool, and he's now the captain of the team thanks to his amazing leadership skills. Virgil has written a big page in Liverpool's history books, and he was probably their best defender of all time. Now, there's one player who just joined Liverpool and has a story all to be written. Federico Chiesa. We made a video on him, check it out! 